I'll be honest. I'm tempted to add more Pokemon or change old designs as much as you all want me to do the same. But I gotta stay strong. I'm looking forward to expanding into new areas, and this month's Smogus challenge is going to be a ton of fun. If you guys haven't caught a stream yet, feel free to pop in for a chat and a glimpse at a very in-depth look into my illustration process. For now, though, I thought I'd give the people what they want and take you through the entire completed Maza region Pokedex. Wait, before you type anything in the comments about how we lied about being done in the last Maza region video, just know that this video will not have any new Fakemon designs in it. We're back, everyone. Welcome to Subjectively. Today, we are going to close the book on the Maza region, my Fakemon project of three years, by going through the now-complete decks. Some of you are already familiar with and have possibly even memorized the entire roster of Maza Pokemon, but no one would blame you if you missed one of the dozens of videos that we've made here at Subjectively over the past few years. This video will serve as a concise reference of every Maza region mon for those of you who want a refresher or just like to see the full lineup in one place. Now, all of the Pokémon you're about to see can also be found on our DeviantArt. Their Pokédex pages as well as their transparent PNGs are all free to download. I figured that, since you can see things like stats, their Pokédex entries, and other such details there at any time, I'd use this video to give a quick recap on the background behind each Pokémon's conception, how I designed them, why I designed them, and any other personal stories I have associated with each one. It should be a lot of fun, and hopefully it won't be too long. Actually, um, I should probably get started, or this whole video is going to last well over an hour. It might anyway. Here it is, the complete Maza region Pokedex. Oh, and for the record, these Pokemon will not be listed in the exact order as they will in the Project Untamed Pokedex. All of that is still subject to change. We'll just start with the starters and end with the legendaries. First up, Malukata, the planter Pokemon. Maybe some of you don't remember this, but my initial concept for Malukata and all of the starters actually had nothing to do with Mexico or Central America or even the concepts of traditionalism or modernism. I just thought it would be funny if I revisited a concept for starter Pokemon that I had when I was like 10. Malukata's whole concept was literally just garden snail, but it slowly evolved into something a little bit more interesting and eventually became the timid little critter we all know and love today. Expurzum, the ranger Pokemon. Once I elevated the concept of Malokata from garden snail to an extraterrestrial slug hero, I was able to come up with a much cooler evolution than a snail with a literal garden on its back. There was definitely a lot of Lulo and Stitch inspiration with this design, something that looked cute, tough, and alien all at once. Gastronaut, the Neo Ranger Pokemon. Gastronaut remains to be one of my favorite Pokemon that I designed for the Maza region. I'm, I'm so tempted to just update its artwork one more time. No design changes, I just want to touch it up so that it's on par with all of my newer designs, you know, use some of those newer brushes that we have. But the design is so solid that the artwork being a little outdated doesn't bother me too much. It's that perfect balance between a couple of interesting real-world concepts and something entirely new and very much a representation of my personal interests. Quetzalil, the Feathered Snake Pokémon. Now, I've made it very clear in the past that I've never been a fan of the Fire Pokémon Zodiac theory. In fact, when I had first conceived my Feather Snake starter Pokémon back in like 2006 or whenever it was, that theory didn't even exist. It was kind of just a coincidence that I made my Fire-type starter a snake. But it did help the fans in deciding on Central America as the real-world inspiration for the region of Maza. Kexel, the Feathered Snake Pokémon. Kexel might actually be my favorite of its evolutionary line. I love the progression in personality from spoiled little prince to a whiny, petulant child who is forced to accept that it is not the center of the universe. This artwork is fine, but, you know, if I gave myself another year to work on this project, I would redraw all of the starters, just updating their designs a tiny bit. Ketsillion, the Fire Dance Pokémon. I think Ketsillion is probably the most believable starter Fakemon that I've made. Granted, the artwork I have for it is a little unconvincing, but design-wise it has all of the characteristics of a popular final starter evolution. 
it's bipedal and fairly humanoid, but it still looks powerful in a very classic fantasy kind of way. I wouldn't be surprised if Getzillion was the fan favorite of the three starters. Porsight, the Sonar Pokemon. Porsight was really hard to design because there aren't actually any official starter Pokemon that don't have legs, arms, or really any way to locomote on solid land. I went back and forth so many times on whether or not to abstract the concept of a terrestrial whale, but after Satitan and Satotl were revealed, I realized that I was relieved that I kept Porsight entirely aquatic. Not that Satitan isn't cool, it, it is, I just didn't want to duplicate that same body plan. Setoeco, the Sonar Pokemon. Originally, the Pokemon designs that would become Porsite, Setoeco, and Bathygigas progressed from a dolphin to a whale into a manatee. I wish I could find those old sketches. Maybe my mom still has them somewhere. I don't know. I decided pretty quickly, though, that keeping the designs all as cetaceans was way cooler. I'm sorry, manatees. Maybe one day you'll get a cool Fakemon design. Bathygigas, the benthic Pokemon. To this day, I'm still very conflicted about Bathygigas. On the one hand, I like its design. On the other hand, it feels like it's missing a lot of what makes a starter Pokemon feel like a starter Pokemon. I've discussed before how starter Pokemon becoming anthropomorphic as they evolve reflects the growth of their trainer along their journey, and especially appeals to younger audiences who like the feeling of having adult strength at their side, even as kids. Not to mention that Bathygigas is considerably larger than both Gastronaut and Ketsillion. <sighs> I don't know, it's still a mixed bag for me. Pakuna, the Nibbler Pokemon. Pakuna is exactly what it needs to be, an underwhelming Route 1 normal type that people only catch because they're doing a Nuzlocke. I'm sure there are a few Pakuna enthusiasts out there, but I kind of designed it to be intentionally, like, middle of the pack. As long as it was cuter than Packrat, you know, I was happy. Laguna, the hair Pokemon. I'm so happy with the changes that I made to Laguna. I, you know, I could be convinced to give it one final pass, but for a design trope that's so out of my comfort zone, I think that it came out pretty well. It feels enough like a somewhat weak Pokemon that is still appreciated for how pretty it is. Not entirely eye-catching, but still appealing. Plus, I, you know, I'm really happy with that shiny. Renner, the Swift Chick Pokemon. I believe that my original sketch for Renner is more or less exactly what its design remains to be to this day. Coming up with the design for this Pokemon was as simple as you may think. I kind of worked backwards from the final stage down to the first form. I think that's a good way to design Pokemon, as the final evolution is usually the ultimate representation of all of the themes of the entire evolutionary line. Avior, the Star Runner Pokemon. I redrew Avior's key art a while back, but I really didn't change much about its design. You know, it's pretty solid. It feels like an early game Pokemon, but a cool one. Usually the early game flying types are pretty unexciting to me, so I decided to get very indulgent with this line. Road Raptor, the shooting star Pokemon. Road Raptor is a design with which I take zero issue. Nothing about it makes me feel like I need to make any changes. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. I wish I did more key art in this style, actually, with more energy and movement and, like, a strange camera angle. It wouldn't work for every design, but especially in Pokémon designs like Road Raptor, where speed is such a crucial part of its identity, adding more dynamism to the pose elevates the design a lot. Mini Mello, the Sugar Ant Pokémon. If I made a list of the top 10 most iconic Maza region Pokemon, Minimello would go somewhere near the top. It's one of those designs that really hasn't changed a lot from its initial conception, and I don't want to change it. My favorite part of Minimello is how it goes from a cute little sugar bomb into a literal wasp dictator. Chikata, the Cutter Ant Pokemon. Chikata is such a straightforward design, and it really didn't take that long to design, but it's still one of my favorites that I've done, and I feel like it's probably one of the most real looking Pokemon, uh, like out of a majority of the rest of the decks. It was somewhat unintentional, but uh, by, at the time when I was designing it, and so many of my Fakemon were like just big blobs in terms of silhouette, Jakarta had a clear, readable, and unique shape that added so much to its design. Noctavispa, the Hawk Wasp Pokemon. It took some work, but my final draft of Noctavispa is a design that I'm very proud of. The execution of my concept finally came through, interpreting the insane life cycle of the real-world Hawk Wasp as a nefarious dictator commanding armies of other Pokémon to fulfill its evil desires. 
I think if I could change one thing, I'd pose it so that its wing cape fell behind its body and you could see the shape of its torso and its arms in the silhouette. Mega Noctovispa, the hawk wasp Pokemon. I think this was the first mega evolution I made for the Maza region. I can't remember now. I know a lot of people don't like this one because it doesn't change Noctovispa's design enough. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. It's more of a subtle mega evolution, like Altaria or Tyranitar. Uh, it also gave me an excuse to bring back the well, go forth my minions pose that it had in its original artwork. Techupi, the small dog Pokemon. Techupi has quite a fan base within the Maza community, and why shouldn't it? You know, it's kind of perfect. It's cute, it's tough, and <laughs> it looks like a piece of shit. Hits the full range of Chihuahua appeal. Lupacabra, the mange dog Pokemon. This guy would definitely go in the top 10 most iconic Maza region Pokemon list. I'd say it's probably one of the most well-liked Pokemon I made as well. Its final artwork and rendering is perfect in my opinion. It looks evil and malicious, but not in the same way as like Noctavispa, more like a schoolyard bully uh, than, you know, a manipulative warlord. More importantly, it looks like a friend, but, you know, maybe a friend that would trip you and then laugh as you fell. Zolupine, the Aqua Dog Pokemon. Now this would go on a list Now this would go on a list of top 10 Maza Fakemon that actually look like they could be official designs and official key art. The silhouette, the pose, the rendering style, the characterization, it, it all feels so convincingly real. You know, I I realize that I'm just, you know, patting myself on the back here, but I really am proud of this final design. And I finally fixed that backwards paw. Lilarina, the weeping Pokemon, another top 10 iconic Mazamon. Lilarina feels like a more important character than the starters at this point, honestly. I've always seen it as like the Ralts of this region, partially because it's the partially because it's the rival's main Pokemon. Its development from a cute little ghost girl into a malicious demon mother is fun to watch too, and I'm really happy with how the whole line turned out. Yakina, the weeping Pokemon. Yakina is definitely an awkward middle stage, but I finally feel like it owns the title now. Before, I don't know, it was awkward in all the wrong ways. I've always struggled with cuter, more feminine and humanoid designs, but I hope that fans of those kinds of Pokemon like what Yakina has become. Yoranakwa, the wailing Pokemon. Time to address the elephant in the room. There seems to be a trend in official Pokemon designs where at least one Pokemon in each generation has feminine humanoid anatomy. I like it, I think it makes sense, I think it adds variety to a set of monster designs, and yes, Yoranakwa is the Maza region's humanoid feminine Pokemon. <laughs> Who knows what Markiplier would say if he had a look at this design. Rotatona, the calendar Pokemon. Top 10 most iconic Pokemon from the Maza region, hands down. From the moment I, it was first conceived, I liked this design. I almost didn't even redraw it, but I'm glad that I did. The little update to its rendering style paid off big time, and now it's definitely one of my favorite designs in the entire region. Chispika, the wrestler Pokemon. We talked about Chispika in the last video and the journey that it went on from ugly to adorable. I hope that it satisfies all of those out there who've been looking for a cute Pika clone in the Maza region. Ariamano, the twig mimic Pokemon. Now I know that if Gen 9's official Pokemon games have had used the Maza region Pokedex, um, Ariamano would have received scathing reviews from angry fans. You know, our, oh, our first bug dragon type and it looks like a mutant head crab? What a waste. I, I think some people <laughs> say that anyway. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird, but I like weird. Don't worry though, I think my Mega Flygon is the dragon bug type that everyone really wants. Elagoop, the preservation Pokemon. Another somewhat controversial Mazamon. Uh, I know that people prefer Elagoop's original design, but I stand by my rework. I think it looks cuter. I think it's got, you know, it looks like something that would actually follow a trainer around and battle by their side. And yes, it, it got the pink shiny bias. I love pink shinies. Tartusk, the preservation Pokemon. I'd like to take a poll to see what percentage of people like the original Tartusk versus those who think the new design is an upgrade. Not that it matters either way. I, I really like the new Tartusk and I have no plans to change it. Honestly, I go back and forth uh, on whether or not 
I would use Tartusk on my team over Geocaprion. Chicxulub, the Impactor Pokemon. And this has got to be in the top five most iconic Maza Pokemon. I know for a fact that Chicxulub is a favorite of the Project Untamed dev team, and for good reason. I'm very proud of Chicxulub. It's different enough from the rest of the Maza decks, but also not so weird that it doesn't read like an official Pokemon design. Mega Chicxulub, the Impactor Pokemon. Mega Chicxulub was one of the winners of our Maza Regent fan design contest created by Jorge Draco as an evolution for Chicxulub. Uh, I decided to change it to a Mega because in my mind, I really couldn't imagine Chicxulub evolving. Nevertheless, we chose it as a winner because, you know, it was just too damn cool to pass over. Charcopal, the Ancient Tooth Pokemon. Now, Charcopal used to be two Pokemon, but I nixed Silicanthus and made Geocaprion a two-staged Pokemon. I think Silicanthus might be the only entirely retconned Pokemon in the Mazari, just completely removed from the decks. I think the new Charcopal has all of the best parts of both its original design and the parts of Silicanthus that I wanted to keep. Geocaprion, the Whirl Tooth Pokemon. By far one of the most self-indulgent Pokemon designs in the Maza region. A prehistoric shark resurrected with crystal bones from its fossilized form. It's so weird and goofy and exactly what I love about Pokemon designs. I would really like to see someone make an animation of it charging up its nose crystal by spinning that tooth whirl. Mazian Maractus, the cactus Pokemon. Maractus changed a lot from its initial design to what we have now. I heard arguments both in favor and against its original mustachioed design, but in the end I preferred this simple, less culturally insensitive design. I like the colors more, I like the personality, and it feels more like a regional variant. Mazian Mudbray, the donkey Pokemon. I got all of my most stereotypically Mexican designs out of my system early on in the Maza region timeline. The Chihuahua, the Pinata, the Cactus wearing a sombrero. Oh jeez, listing them all out loud. Really makes it seem obvious that I am a white guy designing a fictional world based off of a culture that I am not super familiar with. But I think uh, by the end of the decks, there's a good balance of low effort and high concept integration of real world inspiration into this region. Mud's Mache, the Fiesta Pokemon. Mud's Mache was originally supposed to be Mozzie and Mudsdale, but it ended up looking so different that I decided I would rather indulge how different it looked and made it an entirely new Pokemon. It was at this point that I realized I liked making regional evolutions more than just regional variants, so most of my other regional variants have completely new evolutions. Mozzie and Meowth, the Scratch Cat Pokemon. I love Meowth. I, I love it. I love that it has so many different regional variants. I guess they couldn't keep the trend going in Scarlet and Violet, which is a shame. In my hypothetical Gen 9, though, we continue to celebrate the coin cat with a new regional form. Mazian Persian, the classy cat Pokemon. My challenge when designing Mazian Persian was to finally give Persian a form that I thought was cool. As much as I like Meowth, I find Persian dreadfully underwhelming and not nearly as charming as its first form. Alolan Persian is embracing its goofiness, which I can appreciate, but I still don't love it. Perserker is great, but you know, it's it's not Persian. Mazian Persian is actually one of the few Pokemon that I drew over two years ago, and I still haven't changed at all. It, it looks fine the way it is. Zolsmol, the water pup Pokemon. Zolsmol is another iconic Mazamon and a uh, big fan favorite. I know that it was a bit divisive at first, and to be honest, I still think the whole line is, you know, a little bit at least. I like it though, and I like its evolution even more. Amphibark, the water dog Pokemon. The biggest problem with designing Amphibark was how to convey both its water and fire typing. This is where its gills come in. They're a really very multifaceted design element. Not only are they reminiscent of, you know, external gills found on animals like axolotls, but they also mimic the shape of dog ears and stylized flames. Perizotl, the cenote Pokemon. Perizotl is the pseudo-legendary of the Maza region, and I know that some people feel like it shouldn't be. A lot of people have told me that it doesn't look powerful enough or that it's just too goofy. Personally, I love how weird it is, and I love that it's not just another big, scary monster like so many other pseudo-legendaries. 
you know, not that I don't like those designs. I'm actually quite partial to Pokemon like Garchomp, but I still think this is a breath of fresh air. Gohila, the tiny terror Pokemon. A lot of people still don't get Gohila, which is a shame because I really like its concept. I can't tell you how many people ask me to make it bigger, which is like entirely contradictory to its whole design. It's supposed to be a little lizard that thinks it's a kaiju and bullies other Pokemon just because it believes it can. I don't know. I love it. And I really like its Mega. Mega Gohila, the tiny terror Pokemon. Again, people always ask me why Mega Gohila isn't bigger. I True, its kaiju fantasy is brought to life in its mega form, but it's still the same size. Honestly, I think a tiny Pokemon with all of the strength of a kaiju is frighteningly adorable and a much better concept than just a kaiju. I was also super happy with this artwork. For a while, I actually considered scrapping Gohila's base design and just making this form its default. Bolo, the little armored Pokemon. This was kind of an impulse design, but sometimes those designs end up being some of my strongest. A Pokeball decoy design that was just an armadillo that... I don't know, it just seemed like such a good idea that the second it popped into my head, I went for it. I still love its design, but I would update the art if I could work on this project forever. Hoopadillo, the decoy ball Pokemon. Just like Bolo, this was a simple, straightforward design that really didn't take too much to come up with. Uh, for every super convoluted, abstract Pokemon design that I have in the Maza region, I feel like I have just as many that are as simple as Armadillo that looks like a great ball. Crocrozen, the Wood Frog Pokemon. Now this has got to be another top 10 iconic Mon right here. Crocrozen is without a doubt a fan favorite. I know that people were apprehensive about the changes that I made to it, but I definitely think that they were for the best. I really can't decide if this is a simple idea or a complex one. You know, it's one of those like wooden frog instruments, but it's also a wood frog, which is a species of real world frog that can completely freeze over without dying. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I guess it's pretty complex, but it's simple in execution. Mazian Rosalia, the thorn Pokemon. Honestly, I can't remember when I decided that Rosalia should have a Mazian regional variant, but it does make a lot of sense. The marigold flowers, so common in Dia de los Muertos celebrations, replicated the shape and form of Hoenian Rosalia's roses so well that, you know, it just seemed perfect. A lot of people have asked me why there isn't a Mazian Badu. I don't know, I just assumed that Badu doesn't have a, a variant form in Maza, like how Pikachu and Pichu don't have Alolan forms, but Raichu does. Mazian Roserade, the bouquet Pokemon. I've always been happy with this design, but I didn't love Mazian Roserade until I saw the little side story that plays out at the beginning of the Project Untamed game. It, it literally almost made me cry. If you haven't played the demo of that game yet, definitely give it a shot and let me know what you thought of the part with Roserade. Frizzard, the Freon Pokemon. We mentioned weird Pokemon before, Frizzard is definitely one of the weirdest. I designed it during a Smogist challenge and I believe that the prompt was day. Really my initial concept was as simple as air conditioner dragon and that's what it ended up becoming. It's really got Gen 1 vibes, so abstract a concept that you can't really pin it to any one real world inspiration and I love that about it. Zarcoil, the Radiator Pokemon. Everything that I said about Frizzard can be said about its nocturnal counterpart, Zarcoil. Its smogest prompt was night, and I thought about how cold deserts get at night. Bam! Space Eater Dragon to accompany the AC Dragon. It's perfect. Even after redesigning Zarcoil slightly, I still think that Frizzard is my favorite of the two. Sorry, buddy. Suchip, the hunger Pokemon. Suchip was also designed during a Smogus challenge. I think the prompt was hunger. I wanted a cute little bastard that had nasty puppy energy, finding the middle ground between how cute Crocs can be and how annoying a dog can be. Basically, it's a little shit that likes to dig through your garbage and eat your shoes, but you'll love it anyway. Sukubile, the forbearance Pokemon. I think the Smogus prompt for Sukubile was patience. Obviously a crocodile design made sense for prompt patience, but I also wanted to make it a little bit more fantastical. The Aztec myth of Sipactli, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, provided me more inspiration to elevate my crocodile concept. Mega Sugabile, the forbearance Pokemon. Mega Sugabile got to expand on the Sipactli part of its inspiration 
and made it look really terrifying. Strangely, I think I like regular Sukobile more. I think I might have made the Mega a little too busy. Macrabra, the screeching Pokemon. This was another design that came to me pretty easily. It was a Pokemon that I designed during Apoctober, and I had, you know, creepy, enigmatic themes on the brain. To me, it feels like a Gen 3 Pokemon. Abstract in concept and in execution, but still really charming and weird in all the best ways. Dunsended, the Enigma Pokemon. Yeah, at the time I designed this, Dunsparce did not have an official evolution, but people still really wanted it to have one. I never wanted an epic, badass evolution for Dunsparce. I always wanted it to stay goofy. And honestly, the Dunsparce does a better job at preserving how goofy Dunsparce's original concept was than my Fakemon design, and I appreciate that. Shibalbat, the idol Pokemon. Shibalbat is uh, interesting in so much as I sort of repurpose one of my Apoctober pieces into a Pokemon. I liked the concept so much that I wanted to include it in the Maza region, though I do feel like it might be a bit dark for a Pokemon concept. I feel like this is a good representation of the tone I want to strike with my own collectible monster game, though. Chromin, the Corvid Pokemon. Chromin and its entire line was actually not designed by me, but by Jane back when we did a speculative sword and shield video. She thought of a concept involving magpies that steal magical gems and use their powers, and I loved that concept so much that I wanted to include it in the Maza region. Corvoyant, the collector Pokemon. Corvoyant was the first design done out of the lion, and it is heavily inspired by a loose sketch that Claire had done, actually, after hearing uh, Jane's idea. So this design in particular is the result of three separate artists and all of their ideas melding into one. The strange head shape and the face that doesn't really distinguish between the beak and the head is directly taken from Claire's sketches, and I really love how bizarre it looks. Comedam, the illustrious Pokemon. Originally, Comedam's design was a lot more Romani-inspired, uh, but a few people told me that that sort of stereotypical depiction of, uh, you know, people who were once referred to as gypsies, uh, that's offensive to some people. So I pivoted away from that and instead went for an elaborate, luxe, 1920s New York aristocracy look. Honestly, I actually like that aesthetic a lot more. Burbrawl, the hyperactive Pokemon. Now, when I first designed Burbrawl and the rest of its line, I was on the fence whether or not I should make it a secondary pseudo-legendary alongside Zolsmal. The consensus was that the final form just didn't feel enough like a pseudo-legendary, but nevertheless, I still really like this line. Humbeat, the exhaustion Pokemon. I feel like a lot of people consider middle stage Pokemon as nothing more than an annoying step to take between the first form and the final evolution, but honestly, I try to make my middle forms stand alone as their own characters. Humbeat is not just in the waiting room to become something better, it's its own character with strengths and flaws and personality. I really love this design. Actually, I like it more so than its first or final form. Hummy Pummel, the Swift Strike Pokemon. Now, when I said that Humbeat is my favorite out of this line, it doesn't mean that I don't like Hummy Pummel. I actually like Hummy Pummel a lot, and I'm impressed with myself that I was able to make such a good, pretty design. I still don't feel like the Maza region has enough pretty Pokemon, but say lovey. Banana, the peckish Pokemon. Okay, it's Nanner's time. For those of you who don't remember, Banana and actually, well, the next three Pokemon that we're going to look at were all made for a video called Mac a Banana Pokemon for the Maza region. Uh, I literally saw a comment on one of our videos that said exactly that, word for word, um, though almost none of those words were spelled correctly. And I thought it was so funny that I was compelled to Mac not one, but four Banana Pokemon. And no, this design is not a reference to the anime. I did not know that there was an anime called Banana Fish until after I made this design, and the comments blew up. Nanahi, the golden skin Pokemon. It's obvious that this is a borderline Jokemon, but what may not be obvious is that part of this Pokemon is a running inside joke between me and my sisters. It's a little too complicated and not really worth it to explain, but maybe that's part of why it's one of my favorites in this Pokedex. I just love the goofy-ass guy. Potassipod, the rotten peel Pokemon. Anyone who says that a fish shouldn't evolve into a squid has not let themselves become immersed in the true fantasy of Pokemon. 
Clampearl, Remoraid, Execute. I love Pokemon with weird evolutions. Potassipod is my tribute to those weirdos. Titanitrop, the Fruit Bunch Pokemon. Ah, I love my banana monster. I loved it before I redesigned it, and I love it even more now. I've always loved Tropius, and I've always wanted it to be relevant in battle so that people would give it more attention. I know that people want Titanitrop to be a dragon type or some kind of dual type, but again, I love weird evolutions. A dual flying type losing its flying typing is fun in and of itself, and it's pretty telling of how I create the Pokemon first and then balance it around its lore. Balancing for battle is just never my priority. Mazian Nosepass, the Compass Pokemon. This is such a simple regional variant that I really don't even have that much to say about it. I think it's a successful design, I'm happy with it, and I think a lot of people like it and its evolved form. Nosepaunch, the warrior Pokemon. This design was an exercise in 3D forms. So many hard edges and polygonal shapes, it took me a long time to get it to a point where I was happy with it. Really, my goal was to create an evolution for Nosepass that I actually liked, which I knew meant that it couldn't be any variant of Probopass. It had to be an entirely new Pokemon. I am very happy with the final product, though. Beak Peep, the helper Pokemon. Something I learned designing Fakemon is that it is quite literally impossible to please everyone. There will never be a Pokemon design that is unanimously liked. Not one that I could make, or one that is made by the official Pokemon team. Beak Peep was designed for Claire, who loves cute little guys and especially small yellow chicks. Some people think that it's too simple of a concept, other people will tell you that more Pokemon should be like this. I don't know. You'll go crazy if you try to make everyone happy. Beecraft, the builder Pokemon. I was so happy when I came up with this idea, um, but people really like to nitpick the logic of its design, like, you know, how could the female form use its saw? It would have to be upside down, or... Uh, how could the male form hammer it would just bang its head against a wall? <laughs> and I'm just here like, yup, that's right. Those things, yeah, that, that, would, that is how it would work. Um, something probably that I won't miss about designing Fakemon are all of the tiny little detail that people feel compelled to complain about. Regardless, I still really like both of these guys. Adelangler, the Fisher Pokemon. Adelangler is easily a top 10 most iconic Mazamon. I love it. It was another design that came to me so quickly that I literally stopped what I was doing to start sketching it. And it's so simple, but I, I feel like it's a very strong design. I wish I had more Fakemon designs like this one, honestly. Mega Adelangler was another fan contest winner designed by Hogus Bogus. I knew that this one had to win the moment I saw it amongst the other submissions. Uh, it was clever, funny, a strong design, and something that I think everyone could appreciate on some level. Uh, the craziness with the ability will surely be sorted out by the time the fan game is complete. Have faith that those guys are way better at designing Pokemon stats and abilities than I am. Gusteon, the breezy Pokemon. Gusteon and Terion were designed by Claire and went through a couple of different revisions before uh, well, before Gusteon reached its final form. I still struggle with designs like this, but I, I think we ended up with a design that a lot of people like, or at least I hope they do. Terion, the Mud Puppy Pokemon. I'm definitely more happy with how Terion ended up than I am with Gusteon. It's a bit of a departure from Claire's initial idea, but I think it's a lot more convincing as an evolution now. The final updates I made to its design helped a lot. Ziazaya, the Twin Kernel Pokemon. Yup, this guy is one of my favorites. I love the idea, I love the execution, I love how it falls somewhere between cute, strange, and endearing. I also really love its shiny and would 100% shiny hunt this guy. Zusk, the Colonel Cluster Pokemon. Zusk went through a lot of changes before it finally became a Pokemon that I could be proud of. I almost scrapped it entirely, but I'm so glad that I didn't. It feels like a great middle ground between the first and second forms of this line. Maze Men, the Colonel Colony Pokemon. Now I know a lot of people don't like the changes that I made to this Pokemon, but I stand by them and I think they helped a lot. I think it's still got that great creepy cuteness that makes it feel like some sort of ancient relic from a civilization long past, but you know, an ancient relic that you might want to eat. It's like a starchy totem pole and one of my top three favorite designs from Maza. Blazia, the Burnt Kernel Pokemon. 
Some of you may not know that despite being one of the final evolutions for Zia Zaya, I actually designed Blazia over a year after I conceived uh, Zia Zaya. I think it's very emblematic of how much I've grown as a character designer overall, and I'm still proud of it to this day. Mazian Crab Brawler, the boxing Pokemon. I mainly made this regional variant because, as you'll see, I wanted a better evolution for Crab Brawler. I absolutely love its Alolan form, which is why I barely changed it in this iteration, but I am not a big fan of Crabominable at all. Um, fortunately though, its Mazian evolution is a huge fan favorite. Crustang, the low rider Pokemon. Top five best designs from Maza, easily. I think if I took a poll from the audience, uh, how many of them liked Crustang versus how many of them despised it, I think it would pretty much be like a 90-10 split, maybe even more than that. I love it so much. I surprised myself with how good it came out and I need whoever <laughs> came up with its name to identify themselves uh, because you know that just seals the deal. Cafe Karacha, the jumping bean Pokemon. Another design that came to me so abruptly that I had to stop what I was doing to draw it. So simple, so easy, and, and yet so perfect. I was tempted to touch up its evolved form so that I liked it as much as Cafe Karacha, but eh, I, I still like Flitjitter as it is. Flitjitter, the wired Pokemon. I was struggling to come up with electric type Pokemon for the Maza region, because like, you know, I know we needed more. The lightning bolt of inspiration that struck me when I realized that my idea for a coffee bean bug could be that electric type was just so exciting for me. I don't drink coffee, uh, and when I do, I feel like flit jitter. That said, I think even people who like the beverage can relate to the vibes that this Pokemon gives off. Mega Zatu, the mystic Pokemon. Mega Zatu, I actually did as a thank you to one of our most devoted Maza region fan game devs. I've always liked Zatu, but I never thought to design a Mega for it until this particular dev requested it. Pretty damn happy with how it came out, um, but if I had infinite time, I would iron out a few issues that I have with some details in how it's rendered. Mega Flygon, the mystic Pokemon. No, that's not a mistake. <laughs> Both Flygon and Zatu are categorized as the mystic Pokemon in the Pokedex. I really don't know why, but it's a funny coincidence that I designed a Mega for both of them, like around the exact same time. Anyway, I hope my Mega Flygon is the Mega Flygon that we've all been waiting for since Gen 6. For the record though, I understand why Ken Sugimari gave up trying to design a Mega for this Pokemon. It was way harder than I thought it would be. Mazian Vanillite, the fresh snow Pokemon. Coming up with ice types for the Maza region was a tough challenge, uh, you know, as most of the region's geography consisted of jungles and desert. But you know what goes well with deserts? Desserts. I love food Pokemon, and Vanillite has got to be one of the best. I think I did James Turner justice with this Mazian adaptation of his favorite Pokemon. Mazian Vanillish, the icy snow Pokemon. The idea of medicinal snow cones is like a perfect fantasy for the world of Pokemon. I love putting myself into a childlike mindset when I design Pokemon, and my 10-year-old side would love the idea of a magical ice cream cone that was not only delicious, but was also packed with nutritious berries that could cure headaches and other ailments. I mean, who wouldn't love that, honestly? Also, I was 100% aware that the two Aspire berries on the front look like boobs, and that's my 10-year-old self showing through again. Mazian Vanillux, the Snowstorm Pokemon. The key to making a convincing regional variant of an existing Pokemon is to make sure that the basic structure of the Pokemon remains the same, and that only details, adornments, and personality are changed. I think Mazian Vanillux is a very official-looking regional variant, and I really do love it a lot. Kanagin, the Knifehead Pokemon. Kanagan and its line was made during a Smogist challenge, and as much as I thought it would be thematic to make them dragon types, we were already oversaturated in the Mazo region with dragon types. I ended up ditching the entire concept of them being dragons, and I think it works better with the typing that they have. Kahatchet, the Axe Head Pokemon. These guys are another tribute to Gen 3 designs, nothing really specific uh, that inspired their concepts other than like obsidian weapons which left me with a lot of freedom to play around with their body shapes and their silhouettes. I love how simple and straightforward Kahatchet is. Just another example of how your first idea might sometimes be your best. Makwahurt, 
the Arsenal Pokemon. There aren't a lot of straight up evil Pokemon in the Maza region. I think overall most official Pokemon generations have a higher ratio of benevolent or neutral ones to those that are inherently bad tempered, but I wanted at least a few for the bad guy team. Makwahurt is just an evil big menace that literally kills its children and wears their body parts as jewelry. Once again, this was not intended to be a reference to an anime, but man, did people educate me about something called Chainsaw Man when I first revealed this design. And by the way, that is exactly what it sounds like. It is just a, a guy with a chainsaw for a head. Razzle, the ghost feather Pokemon. The next few Pokemon we're going to look at were all winners of the Maza Region fan contest. Razzle and its evolution were designed by the artist Federex. And I can't express uh, clearly enough how jack core these designs are. I almost feel guilty picking them because I was so biased, but they are strong designs regardless of whether or not uh, the concept of a fossilized pterosaur skull infested with an ancient spirit is cool to you. And by the way, if it's not cool to you, don't even bother talking to me. Spectrazol, the god feather Pokemon. Uh, no, they're not fossils. I think a few people are confused about that, and you know, for good reason, but no, uh, these prehistoric looking Pokemon are not actually fossil Pokemon. That is, they are not resurrected from a key item like Charcopal or Elagoop. Just a pair of awesome as dark designs that have really stolen my heart. Cosmet, the small step Pokemon. Designed by a wood fin, this line provided a creative solution to the ice type Pokemon dilemma that the Maza region had. It's tempting when thinking of ice type Pokemon to just design animals that live in Arctic climates or to literally just cover your design with frozen crystals. A thermal regulating space explorer is a very clever way to introduce a new ice type into the Pokedex. Glay Shuttle, the giant leap Pokemon. I think so much of this design is so clever. I know it's kind of a weird one, and I know that it's one of those designs where people either love it or they hate it, but it's good to have designs like that in general. Uh, but personally, I love it. That's why I chose it as a winner of the fan contest. Cryager, the visitor Pokemon. Another great concept by Owood Finn. This was a very tricky Pokemon to illustrate though. Uh, all of the different variations in hue with that transparent layer that makes up the Pokemon's spacecraft. I'd be tempted to do another draft of this guy if I had more time. Mingot, the panhandle Pokemon. Designed by Brynner Aldrich as a submission for the fan contest, Mingot is a fabulous example of how sometimes less is more. It's cute, it's innovative, and if so many people didn't like Pacuna and Laguna, I'd probably scrap them both and have this guy become the Route 1 normal type of the region. Rustache, the dowsing Pokemon. This is a really interesting case of a design that I, I personally, I wouldn't love it if I saw it in official game, and yet I still find it to be an amazing and flawless design. Like it's not really my favorite kind of Pokemon aesthetic, but it does what it's supposed to do and it does it super well. That was the biggest benefit to bringing in other artists to design Pokemon for this region. We have the perspective of many different people in forming designs, not just one guy. Mazian Burmy, the Bagworm Pokemon. I would have never thought to have made a regional Burmy design. Fortunately, Oris Ghost did, and their design is absolutely flawless. I, I did technically do the key art that you're looking at right now, but really all I did was trace over the original artist's sketches. They were kind of perfect. <laughs> All they needed was a, a bit of values to make the artwork consistent with the rest of the Pokedex. Papalode, the confetti Pokemon. I would put Papalode in the top 10 most iconic Pokemon of the Maza region list. It is such a brilliant integration of the themes of the region, as well as the real world cultural inspiration behind Maza. What's more, it addresses the topic of identity, specifically relating to gender, which is so beautiful in so many ways, especially considering uh, we do have two species of Pokemon in the region that have different gender forms. Having one representing the spectrum of gender is something that I really appreciate having in our Pokedex. Gulpy, the Lagoon Pokemon. The original artwork for Gulpy and its evolution was made by Banana Toast, a pixel artist. They made little sprites of their submissions instead of drawn illustrations, which I think is awesome. Submitting their designs in this way really helped to make them feel more like convincing Pokemon designs. And I still think I like the original sprites more than my illustrations of these characters. Malharo, the false beacon Pokemon. 
Malharo is just so cool. There are a few designs from this contest that just make me go, damn, that is better than 90% of the stuff that I've made. Which is like, you know, an unhealthy mindset to have as an artist, but let's be honest, we all do it. Anyway, props to Banana Toast for this design. I, I can't tell you how much it blows me away. Wormote, the glowworm Pokemon. This contest winner came to us from Andu region, and I was so excited when I first saw it. People have been asking me to make a Pokemon based off of the concept of color TV for months, and as much as I loved the idea, I struggled to think of a good way to turn that into a Pokemon. Wormote was such a clever solution for that problem. Strelavision, the glamour Pokemon. Again, such a brilliant way to turn the abstract concept of color TV into a simplistic and appealing character design. Not only that, but the integration of generic early TV era soap opera personality tropes with the two different forms of the Pokemon is really clever as hell. And, and, if, and if all of that wasn't impressive enough, there's a, a, even the swarming form where hundreds of the Pokemon mass together to create a giant TV monster. Absolutely brilliant. Lumipop, the trance Pokemon. This is another design, both it and its evolved form, that makes me feel like some of these artists should be doing my job, and they do it better than me. The levels of creativity and passion that are evident in these winners is so impressive to me, I'll never stop loving this guy. Lumaliko, the Hypnosis Pokemon. A lot of people complain about how the artwork that Emilio Mermelada did for Lumaliko and its previous form doesn't look consistent with the rest of the Pokedex, and I see their point, but I love this artwork so much, I just don't have the heart to change it. I'm more tempted to go through and redraw all of my Pokemon so that they better match this artwork. Joster, the surprise Pokemon. Designed by Tarazi, Joster is definitely the strangest Pokemon the Maza region has in all of the best ways. It is such an interesting combination of concepts from Mesoamerican gods to actual artifacts, and of course, a good amount of the artist's personal interests fantastic splash of variety to the entire decks. Mazian Ekans, the snake Pokemon. This design was pretty straightforward. The Project Untamed dev team had changed Ekans to a Poison Dark type in the game, so I decided to give it a new form to go along with its new typing. Simple enough, but effective. Eltar, the Mamba Pokemon. Instead of making a variant for Arbuck, I thought I'd try my hand at making a unique snake Pokemon for the Maza region. As much as I love this design and its simplicity, I think more than a few people aren't the biggest fans of it. Cast Form, Sandy Form. This is another specific request from the Maza region dev team. Just an annoying little itch that I think we've all been wanting to scratch since Gen 3. Why doesn't Cast Form have a Sandstorm form? Anyway, as simple as this artwork is, it was one of the first that I did with the new brushes that Claire made specifically for rendering Pokemon, and that really did change a lot. Mega Milotic, the tender Pokemon. So in all honesty, I'm gonna be honest here, I chose Milotic as a Mega for the Maza region because I knew it would look good in a thumbnail. Sure enough, the final design came out great, and I'm glad people like it as much as I had hoped they would. Mega Skarmory, the Armor Bird Pokemon. I can't remember why I decided that Skarmory should get a Mega in the Maza region. I think it's just always been one of those Pokemon that I always thought would eventually get a Mega, but it never did. Mazian Magikarp, the fish Pokemon. If you don't know already, Magikarp is my favorite Pokemon. I know it's cringe, but I just love it. The Maza dev team told me that Magikarp wouldn't be in the game, and I found that unacceptable. So I made its own form just for the game, and I love it. Mazian Gyarados, the dragon idol Pokemon. I think only one person caught the main inspiration for the visuals of Mazian and Gyarados and Mazian and Magikarp's design. I was playing a lot of Sea of Thieves uh, when I first designed this, and I loved the gold and emerald visual identity of the Gold Hoarders Alliance. Uh, I also thought that the Haunted Treasure theme worked very well for my mermaid challenge, during which I created and revealed Mazian and Gyarados. Phytide, the algae Pokemon. Phytide and its evolution were thought up of by a couple of Project Untamed developers. We needed more water types to pad out the lengthy sea routes that would be a big part of the Maza region maps, and I really loved this idea. It was also uh, the perfect level of creepy for the Mermaid Challenge. Venerage, the Red Tide Pokemon. I was so happy when I heard that the Untamed team wanted me to make a Ray-inspired Fakemon because I had been wanting to make the same thing leading up to Mermaid. 
merging the Red Tide concept with the basic body plan of a Stingray though, that was such a good idea and one that I can't really take any credit for. Mozzie and Krabby, the false crab Pokemon. Now a lot of you are probably super confused and wondering what video this one was in and why you don't remember it. I'm almost tempted to guess like you, but no, I'll be honest. I made this as uh, part of one of True Green 7's four artists challenge. Um, originally it was a convergent Pokemon, like Toad's Cool, but we changed that and its typing because we needed more water types for the Maza region. Vlada Crab, the Sharp Crab Pokemon. I actually really loved this design that I did for True Green, and I'm excited that it gets to be added to Maza. Originally, it was kind of a Halloween-themed design because I made it at the end of October. It's like a horrifying deep-sea Vlad the Impaler crab monster. For those of you seeing this for the very first time, I hope you like it. Ditto, Mazian form. A joke I'm on for sure, but a good one nonetheless. Claire literally said one day, you know, what if there was a regional variant for Ditto that was just slightly evil? Bam. Mazian Ditto was born. Regiturnal, the constructor Pokemon. I will never not be proud of this design, definitely one of my favorites from the whole dex. When I went to redraw it, I literally only wanted to change the rendering style. Everything else in its design was so perfect, I was worried that redrawing it might mess something up. Reggie Brute, the homunculus Pokemon. This one is so weird and so gross, but I love it for that. My insane abstract concept of God creating man and man creating machine reflected in these Reggie forms needed the uncomfortably human fighting type Reggie to really sell that theme. And uh, Reggie Brute fits the bill. Reggie Wood, the ancient puppet Pokemon. This was the first of the three Pokemon that I came up with. The image of this thing just appeared in my mind one night as I was falling asleep and I knew that I had to get it down on paper as soon as possible. Like Regiturnal, I loved its original design so much that I didn't want to risk messing it up when I updated its artwork, so I just traced over the original design. Meliamuse, the estuary Pokemon. We just got to see the process I took in redesigning these sirens, and I'm so glad that I did. I feel like the four designs are the most representative of my unique artistic identity. I love how weird they are, and I love how much they really feel like an original creation. Meliamist, the deep sea Pokemon. I think Meliamist might be my new favorite of the four sirens. The changes I made to it help it so much, it's insane. It was a really good exercise in silhouette design, uh, going from a big round blob to an actual character with form and movement and flow. Yeah, I think it might be my favorite of the four. Meliamonder, the open ocean Pokemon. Meliamonder is finally as beautiful as I always wanted it to be. I think the hair that I gave it helps a lot in making that beauty more legible. It not only evokes the familiar imagery of Aphrodite rising from a seashell, but it also brings in that bright contrast of red against blue. It's so much better now. Meliamorn, the coral reef Pokemon. All right, let's talk about it. A lot of you people think that the shell arms on each of the siren's chests, and on Meliamorn in particular, look like breasts. Yes, it's intentional. Uh, it was supposed to be a little abstract, you know, and up for interpretation, but I am 100% aware of the shape that they make and where on the body they fall. Also makes Meliamorn even look more like Lady Dimitriscu, if you know what I'm saying. Maripom, the first hunted Pokemon. I'm so happy that perhaps my favorite design that I did for this dex is also one of the mascot legendaries. It took a lot of time to get it to this place, but now Maripom is exactly what I wanted it to be from the very beginning. Furthermore, I feel like I successfully created my own mythos for the region without having to just copy and paste real-world mythology into a Pokemon setting. Hilarmos, the first hunter Pokemon. I may not like Hilarmos as much as I like Maripone, but I'm still so happy with it. Looking at the two legendaries side by side, it really makes me feel proud. It makes me feel like the 10-year-old inside me is happy to think that all of those ideas that started forming way back in 2006 are now being seen to fruition by an artist who's insanely more competent than he ever thought he would be. I wonder, if I showed these designs to my past self, I wonder if I would believe that I even made them. Elorimonda, the resplendent Pokemon. All told, I think I spent about 50 plus hours designing this Pokemon. It took so much fine tuning, but I think it's the perfect third 
to Maripalm and Hilarmos's legendary trio. I have a few things yet that I might change about it, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm very proud of it. And, of course, I won't change those things because it's over. We're done. Drag Taco. <laughs> The Dragon Taco Pokemon. If you haven't seen the original Drag Taco video, go give it a watch. I'm actually pretty proud of that stupid April Fool's prank, even though it was nothing but a, a minute long goof. I couldn't finish the Pokedex without commemorating that bit in an actual Pokemon design. Boinkleby, the pig wolf Pokemon. We end the decks with my tribute to Panko, our beloved dog. It's such an indulgent design that I don't even really care that other people don't like it. I think it's adorable and a fitting tribute to the member of our team that people don't appreciate enough. I mean, she doesn't, you know, she doesn't really do anything or contribute anything substantial, but I still don't think I could do this without Panko. <sighs> okay, that's it. I am exhausted. Oh, I can't believe how many freaking Pokemon I made for this region. Uh... I guess a sentimental conclusion would be appropriate here, but I don't think it would be honest to say that this is really the end of the Maza region. It's not, you know, not by a long shot. And honestly, as long as there are people like you guys to continue appreciating my work and the work of all of the talent people that made this possible, the Maza region will never come to an end. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you want to become a part of what makes Subjectively so special, consider supporting us on Patreon. Any amount helps, and we really appreciate it. Peace! We'll see you all in the next video.